Jew from a really cute uh, Jeff can you see this one here okay uh, Dendro Kaiden is uh, most of them are from uh, from Taiwan all the way to Philippines and this is Dendrovian uh, Dendro Kaiden Couple Adam and this particular print here is is one of my uh, best print uh, we all it's always every year always for our, in March and I it had won me several trophy for me at the Santa Barbara International Orchestra so you know everybody have as an exhibitor we always a couple of the print we actually t targeted for a, a p one particular show and I did not do uh, because there's no show this year in Santa Barbara so I did not really groom the print but uh, uh, if it kept going through a show so I kind of let them uh, uh, grow naturally kind of dripping but if I'm going to take it to the show for example and you notice that uh, for dendrokinum if you go into a bigger print I like to grow them in the, the shoulder pan and these are in new, uh, my cherry moss and so if you go in the moss and I like to grow get the, the ball pen then the the pen shoulder for the the ball and so they are actually very fragrant so i'm um, some of this if you take it to the show for example as the flower it, as the flower keep opening they're gonna be heavy so i i usually will take one of the the wire that jamie always like to use in here can push them inside for transportation and then this is what it, you should do grooming them and that is it's going to be more this uh discipline and also and oh by the way if you like to buy the if you can want to get this force wire uh this is the number for you a zero 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 one seven three uh it's when you go this uh dendro cadem especially when they're long one and I sometimes I have the old uh, toothbrush. You can actually brush out some of the old uh, scale before you take it to the show. And I always try and when they start spiking, I you always try to raise, put another part, raise it higher, because the minute almost that puffy pedium that Cinderella, you don't want that. You do not want to let the tip of the flower spike touch the ground or the ta the table. They will stop growing. So that's why if you let go, uh, each one of them uh, can have up to 36 flowers and they're very, very fragrant, very, very fragrant. So, uh, so then, and I want you to notice the, the, notice the, the leaf structure. This is the, uh, the species from Philippines and this is the number for you. We still have a few of this, uh, wonderful species to have. Okay, and then there's another one is there is one actually native from uh, Taiwan. It's called uh, Dendrochytum Formosa Monker uh, Division. The different and this one here from Formosa from Taiwan, they flower at Christmas time. So you have this species coming for Christmas, uh, and obviously they had down flower, but without flowering them, the leaf structure almost looks very similar versus the one from the uh, coquillard from philippine and you know philippine uh, taiwan island is actually no of the philippine so it's very possible uh the the former sauna strain maybe from philippine originally they just brought over the uh, ocean uh but generally speaking the former sauna strain have smaller leaf versus the coquillard strain the, notice the leaf structure Okay, uh, then I want to show you another. I pretty much have most of the dendrocardium uh, species. The dendrocardium is a group, uh, is wonderful to grow. They're very easy. They, they, they're sort of on the sea level and they are kind of warm to intermediate grower. And some of them can go as far south as Indonesia, which is uh, more tropical. So the, the one from uh, Indonesia which is very oh, 
unique and this is part of my best most unusual dendrochylum is this one here uh dendrochylum javelinensis mount clear okay now this is from indonesia i and i look at the leaf it's almost looks like oriental symbidium it's, it's also very ornamental and had a purple-ish leaf structure and because they find Indonesia where it's hotter the leaf structure is totally different than the one from more tropical area and it's very very thick leaf lead, almost a leathery very pointed yeah you can hurt people with the, with the tip of this uh, the shoe here uh, but this is we I still have about four division only uh, this is one of my uh, rares uh, and the beautiful the flower is like butter yellow and they just they can bring flower twice a year they always flower from the new grow okay and it's dendro and some of the dendrochylum species from Philippines is also this one here okay now the name could be the dendrobium whimsii okay but the but some people also go with the name uh, Archinite. Uh This is the regular red form. This is the yellow form. Okay. Regardless, this is a, this is the, another species form is from the Philippines. Now this species give you this kind of grass like, and in fact, you can actually use this. It's very tingling. Uh, uh, and they just they can flow twice a year on, on this for me so and uh, they always flower from the new shoot and this is where the leaf come from so as soon as they f flower finish uh, you can just cut them off okay and this particular species is almost like it's a very succulent leaf type uh, in the winter time, you can always tell by the leaf structure on the dendrochylum. The one with the grassy leaf like this type, they like to be dry between water. So I usually use a lot of uh, the coarse mix with perlite in there. But they also, but the yellow form, for example, on this one here because they come from different areas but they tend to like to have uh, I use the moss because where they come from so the Wednesday generally speaking uh, you, you don't be surprised because I don't have a I, I use just a tap water here uh, the a lot of time it, it might have this tip here and that's just the uh, sensitivity from from the water so I usually do it in a, a trim and I, when I trim the edge I let the trim in an angle so it still looks very similar okay so this is the, the very species so this is actually after the flower finish on this species I need to get in a, a, a haircut on them okay so where, where can you go dendrochylum? Uh, dendrochylum is actually very, very good for under light or windowsill. And last one, but the, not the least. Here's another dendrochylum. This is the biggest of, the, 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 of the, this genus. This is the dendrochylum uh, magum. Magum always flower in July. So this is going to be a, a gigantic, uh, maybe uh, the flower spike when they're cascading can be about, about 46 flowers on them. Very similar to this, except it's green and just uh, super sized. So Dendrobium magum is from the Philippines. Okay, so I the mag, magum is actually uh, require the most light of all the species I grow here. And I grow usually with my cataria. Okay, but as you can see, all these two, the Formosa and Cochiano type, usually like to grow a little bit shade, shadier. So I can usually grow them with the Phalaenopsis. 
and the succulent leaf or the grass leaf type they like to be dry a little between water and I also they also like a bit more light and so I grow them with my carrier so if you actually this these are the perfect species Bo both of them or even this the magnum can be go under light and can either go with your uh, carrier or fan analysis but with the fan analysis you can actually put them together with your novelty fan analysis which one they, they, they when they like to have a lot more fan, more light than your other species and how are we doing so far the dendrochytum is a species wonderful species in your collection i i i go i can i can always uh sell them or people come here in the springtime this is one of the things they will catch their eye so you can start for for, for if you like fragrance so a lot of your novelty fan analysis does not have an in the in the in the winter time december to april if you want something fabulous for fragrance grow the dendrochytum because uh with the novelty you can announce the bonina and Val valencia do not usually kick in in, in flower until the end of april naturally and then this genus can fill you up your collection not only that this, part this particular species is wonderful because they, they in my in my experience they tend to flower again in the fall with a new shoe okay so this is uh this is one genus i i always like to grow them and i have a lot of fun with it and they're easy to grow uh they double in size okay so this one here this is well this is the premium size and this is in in this side this is just in the three and a half inch pot so when this one finish for example I will cut it from here then I can bump this out to maybe a four inch part only maybe in this this side of clay part and next year they're gonna be double inside we will give me a, this maybe eight six to eight spike on them so okay and again these are growing in the moss they love uh, they love moisture so do not what I'm trying to put it in a uh, so this is look at the roots here uh, I, I have it in the moss but I use the styrofoam peanut from your shipping area put a layer of, of styrofoam peanut and then use only small layer of moss and they actually eventually go into it so this is still a good moist but also dry out in between watery and this is wonderful okay so the, the culture on this, I will usually put it all together. You, I can go to species cookie item side by side with my fan analysis and they are perfectly okay. That's wonderful. Okay, so this is what happens if you don't you know, spike them and then the, the, the grooming. They look like a daisy chain okay, they're kind of coming down here, okay. So this is fun. Uh, this is something that uh, if you're in Florida, this one will go that like way for you. And any of the genus in uh, Dendro Highland in, in, in Florida or the, the South, they love the moisture. And if you are uh, Pacific Northwest or Northeast, put it, put it in your sunny window. And they like it, uh, they don't get on the, on, the, on the warm side because all these species, one from Taiwan to this, from the Philippines all the way to Indonesia, like this one here they all the warm growers so uh, just treat it as a warm slightly to intermediate on growing and you feed i we, i feed them with the, the same ratio with the, with my normal socket food and everything got treated the same we uh this has treated uh also regular basis with a uh, mega thrive solution oh by the way mega thrive we just got a new shipment in uh, we we make fresh. We only make we only order every so often, and so get your order in now because we can. Uh, we have a lot of backup order, and get them in now because the uh, the, sh the the I think the shipping is a lot better now as the uh, as a couple of weeks ago. Okay, how are we doing so far? 
Right. So I think this will com complete the the genus of dendrochytum. Just a make, make, think of it a bit. The light is between the Phalaenopsis and Cattleya. They like moisture, so do not let them dry up. Except a couple of the species, like the and that one nine six five dendrochytum wensii. They all this kind of leaf structure like they like to be dry a little bit between water the rest of them uh it just love water and uh in the in the in the summertime but when it is finished uh is when the vegetative stage and if you go cut to see them they, they, they're very similar you cannot overwater them they just love the water they just, and love the feeding they will build up all the energy getting ready for next spring and this is the one I, for this plan for example i probably will ship to uh it has been here for about three years and i think it's time for me to ship to a bigger part so next year for example santa barbara should gonna have a, a resume so we we probably ship into a, a 12 inch pot so we'll get bigger and hopefully we can probably get another trophy winner for the for the genus and it's it's fun and if the formal sauna one and if you then if you can get the the clay pot, this is the ultimate. Uh, I like the clay pot because, uh, because uh, it is it hold the moisture better. Okay, and look at this. Look at all the root here. Okay, and this is in the moss very shallow and this one here is perfect i probably can divide them uh unless i i, I think it would be hard to find another sh uh, ball pan in clay pot to be this big uh but it's fun it is uh you can also do it as a hanging basket put a couple hole hang them and just let them uh fall down naturally so if you got uh if you are a carrier grower then driving grower uh, Dendrochytum is one genus. It doesn't have a lot of species, but it's a fun genus to try. Uh, very forgiving, even for beginner. All right. So, Jeff, what's our next segment? Uh, tip of the week. Okay. All right. The tip of the week today. Okay. Many of you, we're going to have all this pop uh, situation before. Uh, sometime. You might have Dorotinopsis or Phalaenopsis that give you this terminal spike. Okay, uh, some people say, "Oh, the terminal spike is the plant is dead. Trash it." No, unfortunately, uh, depend because you, you see this terminal spike a lot on the Phalaenopsis had Doritis, you know, the the all Doritis species. You know, now it's called everything is called Phalaenopsis, but it's the Doritis that Potrima. Genetically, they do that. Uh, the plant is not dead yet. Okay, they just decide to take a union break. So all you have to do is cut off this tip from here. Okay. So what happened right now is going to reduce the apical dominant because this final analysis is just a vent that they are uh, have the monocot. So if they only go up. So what this going to re reduce? The domination okay and this yellow leaf let it go uh the part of genetic this plant actually jeff if you can see it's actually ready to give you a cakey from here it's not a flower spike because it's very very fat and round so the plant a lot of time by cutting back the apical dominant here is going to release and this plant here we're going to have a cakey coming out so the, you're going to have a twin. Okay. So, so this is the shoot. This is going to be a cakey, a baby plant coming up. So this is what happened when they have this terminal spike. Uh, don't give up on them because it's a, it's a physiological physiology. I, I sometimes I call it, they want to take it a union break. So they do that. They will give you another cakey coming up and this yellow leaf here, you can, it's not disease, it's just uh, getting yellow. There's no sign of disease. So I would just leave it there, let it fall off naturally. 
So because I don't like to make another cut or in that way you can have an insection. So once you have a, a, a surface cutting, then you use uh, more problem with the infection here. All right. And I'm gonna take a more take a look. Yeah, there is no infection, so I'm just gonna let it dry off. And if eventually this will be detached themselves. So I'm gonna put this one here, and then just don't do don't do water. Do not water. Do not feeding. Okay, you can make a dry them because the root system is beautiful. The plant is very active. They're very healthy. So I'm gonna just and the the moss is moist. So I, I you can go without water for about two three weeks. So I'm going to just put it here on the side so we can actually revisit later on as, as the plant goes. Okay, so this is the tip of the week for this week. So I'm this will complete this segment and I 